Semiconductor sanctions and export bans have been key tools in the effort to curb China's rise in advanced technology. The logic seems straightforward. Deny access to critical tools and progress would stall. Yet, the reality has unfolded differently. China's semiconductor industry has demonstrated remarkable resilience, growing stronger in response to these pressures. The sanctions have driven Chinese firms to focus on domestic innovation, achieving breakthroughs once deemed unattainable. This raises a fundamental question. Are these restrictions achieving their intended goals, or have they inadvertently accelerated China's rise in the global chip race? As Harvard economist Dr. Rory Green recently observed, the sanctions may have slowed China in the short term, but in the long term, they're forcing the country to build an independent ecosystem, a goal it had struggled to achieve before. China's progress is not limited to headline players like Huawei and SMEC. Dozens of lesser-known companies are quietly revolutionizing the semiconductor landscape. Together, these firms are forging a path toward technological self-reliance. At the heart of China's semiconductor dominance lies its control over silicon. As the foundational material for all chips, silicon is a critical resource in the global tech race. In recent years, China has leveraged this advantage to solidify its position. In 2019, China accounted for 67% of the world's electronics-grade silicon, a share that has likely grown with continued investment in production and refining facilities. Industry leaders like Tongwei and GCL Poly have emerged as global powerhouses, producing more silicon than some entire nations. Their ability to operate at such scale has made China indispensable in the global supply chain. This control extends further. In silicon wafer manufacturing, China holds over half of the global market with several of the world's largest wafer producers based within its borders. These capabilities give China a unique edge, both as a supplier and as a force capable of dictating terms in the semiconductor market. The question is, can Western nations develop a counter-strategy to compete with such entrenched dominance? China's influence in semiconductors goes beyond production, its domestic market is the world's largest, consuming over half of all semiconductors globally. This dual role as both producer and consumer gives China extraordinary leverage over the global chip industry. To illustrate, Greater China, including Hong Kong, accounts for more than 50% of global semiconductor demand. This makes China's market four times larger than the United States, and six times that of Germany's. This massive appetite is driven by a booming tech industry and an electronics manufacturing base that supplies products worldwide. For Western firms, this creates a dilemma. Losing access to China's market means sacrificing a significant portion of revenue, yet continued engagement often runs counter to their government's policies. As Intel CEO Pat Gelsinger stated in a recent interview, the world cannot afford to decouple from China. It's simply too integral to the supply chain. This tension underscores the complexity of navigating the semiconductor industry's future. While China consolidates its position, the global semiconductor industry grapples with the rising cost of innovation. Each new breakthrough demands greater investment in research, development, and infrastructure, raising questions about sustainability. Consider the staggering costs involved in building a 2 nanometer chip plant. Initial investments exceed $30 billion, and the costs of operation only climb from there. In 2022 alone, TSMC, Intel, and Samsung collectively spent nearly $100 billion on R&D. This relentless push for smaller and faster chips reflects the industry's hunger for progress, but also its vulnerability. As Dr. Chris Miller, author of Chip War, noted, the cost of staying at the cutting edge has become prohibitive for all but a handful of players. This financial strain is compounded by geopolitical factors. For Western firms facing export restrictions and supply chain disruptions, the question is, can these investments pay off in an increasingly fragmented market? 
For decades, Moore's Law has driven semiconductor innovation, predicting that the number of transistors on a chip would double every two years. While this principle revolutionized computing power, it is now approaching its limits, both physically and economically. Modern chips contain billions of transistors, each measuring just a few nanometers, smaller than a bacterium. This level of miniaturization has pushed the boundaries of what's possible, requiring enormous investments to achieve even incremental gains. As Moore's Law slows, the semiconductor race becomes less about raw innovation and more about strategic adaptation. This shift presents an opportunity for China. With its focus on scaling production and finding cost-effective solutions, China could capitalize on the slowing pace of Moore's Law to close the gap with its competitors. The industry faces a pivotal moment. Will innovation remain the key driver, or will scale and efficiency take precedence? The slowdown of Moore's Law has ushered in a new dynamic commoditization. In this environment, scale and cost efficiency overshadow cutting-edge innovation. For China, which excels in mass production, this is a significant advantage. SMIC, one of China's leading chip manufacturers, has made notable progress in narrowing the gap with global leaders. Once lagging Intel by four to five years, SMIC now trails by just three. These gains are particularly significant given the high barriers to entry in semiconductor manufacturing. The rise of commoditization has led many to wonder, is the semiconductor industry on the verge of becoming just another mass-manufactured sector? If so, how can traditional leaders maintain their edge against China's manufacturing juggernaut? With traditional chip advancements becoming increasingly costly, the industry is turning to advanced packaging. This approach, which involves combining and optimizing existing chips, offers a more cost-effective path to improved performance. The global market for advanced packaging is projected to grow from $43 billion in 2022 to $74 billion by 2028, making it one of the fastest-growing segments in the industry. China's existing dominance in silicon wafer production positions it as a natural leader in this field. By focusing on advanced packaging, Chinese companies can achieve performance levels comparable to cutting-edge chips without needing the latest fabrication technologies. This strategy not only reduces barriers to entry, but also accelerates progress. As semiconductor analyst Dan Wang remarked, Advanced packaging levels the playing field, allowing latecomers to compete with established leaders on equal footing. For China, this represents both a shortcut and a strategic edge. China's rise in semiconductors is underpinned by a robust investment strategy. The National Semiconductor Fund, or Big Fund, has been instrumental in channeling resources into domestic innovation. Since its launch in 2014, the fund has allocated over $100 billion to bolster China's semiconductor ecosystem. In 2023, the big fund added another $47.5 billion to its war chest, surpassing the $39 billion earmarked under the U.S. CHIPS Act. Local governments have also stepped in, with Beijing and Shanghai establishing multi-million dollar investment pools to support semiconductor development. These efforts are complemented by private sector giants like Huawei, which invested $81 billion in R&D between 2019 and 2022. This financial ecosystem creates a formidable foundation for growth. The question is, can Western nations match China's scale of investment, or will they be outpaced by this coordinated effort? Western sanctions were designed to limit China's access to advanced technology, but their effects have been far from straightforward. While these measures have created obstacles for Chinese firms, they have also disrupted global supply chains and hurt Western companies reliant on the Chinese market. NVIDIA, for instance, reported a $400 million revenue loss in 2023 due to export restrictions. This highlights a broader issue. Can Western firms afford to lose access to China's market, which accounts for over half of global semiconductor demand? 
The sanctions have also pushed China to double down on its efforts to achieve self-sufficiency, potentially accelerating the very outcomes they were meant to prevent. The semiconductor race is no longer just about technological innovation. It is a battle for geopolitical influence. As Moore's Law slows and costs rise, the industry faces an inflection point. China's strategy of leveraging scale, advanced packaging, and coordinated investments offers a compelling model for navigating this new landscape. The ultimate question remains. Will the West find a way to counter China's strategy, or is a new era of tech leadership inevitable? As these forces converge, the decisions made today will shape the future of global technology for decades to come. We're glad you're enjoying this video. Please like and subscribe. Check out another video that is now on your screen.